Welcome back to the sawmill friends. It is a nice day in Tennessee. I tell you what, this is my favorite time of year. It's fall, the leaves are falling down, but the temperature is the best part. That's a lot of logs over there. What's that guy doing? I'm driving down my road here and there's a guy with a bunch of logs in his yard. Always key in on stuff like that if you run a sawmill. You never know when you're going to miss out on an opportunity. So anyways, this is my favorite time of year because the temperature is nice. It's about 50 degrees in the morning and by about 2 or 3 o'clock it reaches about 65. Perfect weather, very low humidity, a good time of year to get some stuff done as long as it's not raining. That's the only downfall about this time of year for Tennessee if it does start raining on you pretty bad. The ground does get kind of soggy. It's hard to do stuff. But other than that, I love it. So we're just a few miles from my house. Actually, the place we're going is only two miles away. It's to a buddy of mine's farm, or one of his farms, rather. He owns multiple farms around here. I got to check on him real fast, and he's wanting me to look at something. And while we're there, we'll take a look at his walnut trees. This is about a 50 acre hay farm. There's no house or nothing on it. All they do is use it for hay. But there is a nice creek line. And on that creek line is a very good stand of walnut trees. I counted them one time. I think I got to 70 when I, I quit counting them. Man, they're nice. I wish he would let me cut some of them, but he won't. And that's his land, his decision. So. Uh, We'll take a look at them while we're there. And I think he may have his Kubota tractor down here today doing some uh, backhoe work. We'll see what he's got going on. You guys hang in there. As soon as we're done here, we'll go back to the sawmill. I gotta move some lumber around, sort some logs, and start on a brand new order of pine and cedar. All right, guys, I just entered the farm and I'll get out here in a few minutes and we'll walk over and take a look at that one. Check out that walnut right there. Man, that's nice. That's probably about 28 inches diameter and nice and clear on the bottom. Did I mention there's some nice trees down here? My goodness. Now there is another reason I brought you guys with me down here today. I come down here all the time. It's to answer a question that I got at the Paul Bunyan show that somebody asked me as far as how to manage their forest. And hopefully I can give that person some advice today with this video. And it might help out somebody else out there that's got the same question. Pull something out to you guys. Right there is a dead standing ash tree. And it's in a terrible place. Right there is the road going to the back part of the hay field. And for you guys out there that own woodlots, get out and check your forest and look for ash trees because there's a good chance a lot of them may have the emerald ash borer. And if they do, they're dead. I think there might be some kind of treatment out there. It's pretty expensive. I don't know if it even works. But if you've got any ash trees, keep a good watch on them because that one right there has been dead for quite a few years. You can tell by the top of it. And sooner or later, it's going to fall. And you don't want to be under something like that. I need to come over and help Mike cut this one day and get it out of their way so it doesn't fall on nobody. So as we drive out through here on the way out, right there's two walnuts. And I was right about the number. Mike said they got over 70 walnuts in here. I couldn't remember. And one thing that's very unique about these walnuts, they're all growing near that creek over there. And in my opinion, a walnut tree that grows near a creek has a different kind of color to it. I'm not sure if it's the minerals or what's going on with it, 
but in my experiences, it looks like when you saw up a walnut that's been on the creek, the color is so much better than a regular one in the middle of a forest. Another nice walnut right there. There's a bunch of sycamore as well. Sycamore will grow near water. Need to look straight ahead so I don't drive off in the ditch here. That'd make for a bad day, but probably a good video. Right there's another nice walnut. Just tons of them, guys. The average diameter on the walnuts in here is about 20 inches, and there's a lot of them that are bigger than that. Got some small ones as well, and there's a lot of box elder in here. And look at these little walnuts right here. Such nice trees over here, guys, I'm telling you. That makes this property worth even more, having these walnuts on it. So this is it, guys. This is my favorite tree on the farm. It's about 24 inches diameter, and that's being kind of modest. It's probably bigger than that. And guys, check it out. A nice straight log, or a straight tree, rather. It's not a log yet. Maybe one day, a good canopy up top. Fantastic tree right here, guys. This is what walnut's all about right here. A nice standing walnut near a creek, thriving with no issues. And as we scan up right here, you've got probably 20 plus feet before it does branch out. And check out that crotch right there where it comes out. Fantastic, another crotch right there above it. And then maybe one more saw log past that. Just a nice tree, guys, I tell you, just fantastic. Every time we drive down the road, I look at this tree. It's one of my favorites. And this walnut's having plenty of babies, friends. You can see the walnuts on the ground. No lack in that going on over here. There's, a, there's a, probably a market for walnuts over here with all these trees giving off the nuts every year. So that gets me back now to the question that I got at the Paul Bunyan show. A lot of you guys that came out were landowners. And I don't mean just a few acres. Some of you guys were telling me that you own three and 400 acres of forest in multiple different states. It was kind of uh, amazing to hear all your stories about the land that you owned. And to be honest with you, I was kind of jealous. I'd love to have a giant woodlot down the road from me or somewhere I could go get my own trees at whenever I needed logs. But a lot of people were asking me, what trees should they cut? How do they manage their forest? And I gave some advice there to those people, but I know there's some people out here on YouTube watching this channel that have the same questions that own lots of land. Now here's some ideas for you. If you own a good sized forest anywhere from, it could be one acres to a hundred acres. You know, if you've got a, you know, if you got just maybe a half an acre and a few trees, this ain't gonna pertain to you. If you've got a few acres behind your farm or homestead that's totally wooded, and there's a lot of timber back there, mature and juvenile, you know, this is for you. And if you have 200 acres, it's really for you. Because there's a lot of money sitting on your woodlot, guys, in the timber industry. So here is something to think about. What the world's going on here? I'll tell you what, I'm trying to explain something to you guys. And they got the roadblock, it looks like. All right, guys, sorry about that. They're doing some utility work down there and there's nobody with any flag directing traffic. We was policing ourselves on a curb. That's not a good idea. They need to have somebody down there to show people where to go. So anyways, if you got some land, you got your trees and you're not sure what's going on with them, if you go back there and look, you just really can't tell, you know, because the average person ain't gonna have the knowledge that a forester would have. And that gets to my uh, recommendation here of advice. Don't call a logger, don't call tree service. Get a hold of your local forestry department, and every state has one, and see if the forester that's assigned to your county will come out and do a timber cruising with you to see what kind of shape your timber's in. And you can go a step beyond that. So let's say you call the forester and he's maybe eight or nine months out because he's busy doing a lot of logging sites or who knows what he's doing. He may be overworked and covering four different counties. That's not rare in that industry. So if that's the case, you go out and you hire a private forester. It will cost you a little bit of money, but you will get that money back, friends, in no time. It's not expensive. They'll come out, they'll look at your trees, they'll tell you what's healthy. More importantly, they'll tell you what's not healthy, what maybe should go, before Mother Nature takes it back. 
and it will save you a lot of money in the long run and make you some money in the long run because they're going to be able to tell you exactly what you need to know to make your forest healthy and strive in the future. So there's my advice guys, hire the local forester if the state doesn't have one available and they are out there. There's tons of independent foresters out there that don't work for the state or for a logging company or they may work for a logging company but they may moonlight and have their own little side business of doing forestry work. But I'm telling you what guys, it's a small investment to make, I gotta check the mail, to uh, ensure that you're not gonna lose any money on your property. All right, friends, I think there's a pretty good argument to make, possibly, that moving logs around with pallet forts may be faster than with a grapple. I've done it both ways here for years at the sawmill. You guys have seen me you know, use the grapple most of the time. I think I use the grapple 90% of the time when grabbing logs, but it seems like when I have pallet forts on there, it goes faster and I'm a little bit more accurate. Maybe I'm not as good as on a grapple, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it might be a little bit faster. I've never timed myself, but it seems like it is. So we're getting ready to saw up some cedar. I brought three over. I got an order to fill for dad. So here's what he's doing. I'll put a picture up. He's closing in an outside seating area in his backyard and making it like a yard barn. He's got some cedar right there for siding. It looks pretty good but he didn't have enough, so he called me this morning and he needs some more. We need to mill up 20 one by sixes, eight feet long out of cedar. That's a true four quarters on the thickness and six inches on the width. He's also needing some two by fours, but we'll do pine for that. And I think he needs some one by threes out of cedar as well. I have to look at my list, I can't remember. Right now we're gonna focus on the 20 one by sixes, but I've got three good logs here. This is Eastern Red Cedar, and for you purists out there, Juniper, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's red, it smells good. We call it cedar here, it really don't matter. People always get upset in the comments when I call it red cedar. So uh, whatever you want to call it. We should get 20 plus one by sixes out of these three logs. These came from a local farm down the road. Hopefully they didn't come from a fence line and there's no metal. That's one thing about cedar. A lot of the times you do have nails in it because it comes from a fence row but you can't really tell by looking on the end grain. With oak, you can see a stain and know that there's a nail in there. With cedar, it gives you no signs at all that there's metal hiding in that log. You have no idea until you open it up. That's why I'm leaving this blade on the mill. That's a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, call Joe. Cell phone numbers in the video description. Don't email me. His number's down there. 
But that blade is pretty dull, friends. It's been on there for a while, but I think we can get most of this cedar sawed up right here on that blade. Hopefully, if it starts making a lot of racket, I'll put a new one on there. And that's one reason I'm not gonna put a new one on right now because these logs are unknown to me. He says they came from his field, but you never know they could have came from a fence line that was there years ago. So we'll at least open a few of these up and make sure there's no, uh, no metal present. I can't talk today, no metal present. So anyways, everything's lined up back here. We got the deck cleared off. I do have a new chainsaw I'm gonna show you guys today. We'll cut the slabs to length as I pull them back and I'll show you guys this chainsaw and what I think about it so far. Actually, I don't really know what I think about it so far. I've yet to use it. This is the first time I'm ever going to use it. So I should choose my words wisely right there. We're going to use it for the first time today and see how it does. So let's open this one up, friends. Cedar usually saws really fast and really good and clean when you have a fresh blade on there. That may not be the case today with this blade here, but it may do okay. This is a small log, maybe 12 inches on the diameter. And two things here and we'll get started. I always forget this stuff. I need to write it down. Uh, thanks to everybody on Patreon for supporting me here in the channel. I really appreciate it. And number two, it's getting to be winter time and we do have our hoodies in stock over at Farm Focus. There's a link down below. We have a zip up hoodie and one is just a pullover. It's got the OTW banner on the front and on the back. I have them here as well. I wear them all winter. Bruno wears them pretty much every day. So uh, if you're looking for something warm to wear this winter, and this is my little sales pitch for my shirts or my sweaters rather, go check out the link down below. It helps support us here in the channel and keeps diesel fuel in these tanks because I bought 100 gallons the other day and I'm just about out already, which means I'm headed back to Virginia probably by the weekend. That's gonna be about $500. Part of doing business, I guess. There's links down below. Go check it out. Let's open this one up, guys. Y'all hang in there. Friends, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I love a battery powered chainsaw at the mill. The main reason is if I need to cut a slab to length or take a knot that's sticking out off of a log, I don't have to pull a cord. I just grab it, it's ready to go. It's all about being fast. You know, if I, if I need to cut, you know, a few inches off a 20 inch diameter log, I'll grab the Husqvarna, you know, that's a no brainer. But for most uses at the mill, a battery powered sawmill is perfect. You grab it, it's ready to go, but always make sure your battery is charged. Sometimes I forget to put this in the charger. So that gets to where I'm going with this little saw that I got in the mail yesterday. And the brand is O-L-M-L-M-O. -M -M I'm not sure how you pronounce that to be honest with you. This saw is made in China. And before you guys go down to the comments section and lose your mind, 
For a, a few things here to keep in uh, perspective is, this is not a sponsored video. If you buy this saw, I don't make nothing off of it. And they're not paying me to tell you guys about it. They just sent the saw out to me and said, review it and see what you think. And if you like it, you can tell people about it. And that's what I'm doing today. This is not a sponsored video. If it was sponsored, it would say that up here or over here in the top corner. That's required by law. I have to put that in there if it's sponsored. And on the China thing, before you guys get upset about it, look down at your phone that you're watching this video on or the phone that you carry if you're watching this on a tablet or a TV. And there's a 99.9% .9 chance that phone was made in China. So get over that. There's no sense in, uh, there's mama cat coming up here. There's no sense in getting upset because somebody has something that's made in China. We all own stuff that's made in China. Taiwan, Japan, all over the world. I'm sure if you go through all the stuff in your house, you'll find something made in a lot of different countries. And if you only have stuff made in America, your house is probably pretty empty, more than likely. So uh, there's no sense in getting upset over that. So anyways, this, this chainsaw right here is made in Germany. Nobody never gets mad about that. Oh, that's what, you know, German made saw. You know, I never get the comments when I show it. So anyways. So to have a battery powered sawmill, a battery powered sawmill, my goodness, to have a battery powered chainsaw at your sawmill, it's kind of expensive. This is a steel, I use it every day up here and it costs about $600, including this battery right here. That's an AP300 battery and it's pretty heavy. Really good saw, I wouldn't be without it. One of the best purchases I've ever made is this saw right here. But having said that, not everybody wants to spend that much money on a saw. This one on Amazon is for $2.99 and it comes with two different bars, 18 inch bar and I think the other bar is 16, I can't remember, I'll put it right here because I put the longest bar on it. 3 8 inch chain, it appeared like it was pretty sharp out of the box as far as the chain goes. Has two batteries right here on the back and uh, chain break. I don't know how long these batteries will last. I'm not gonna go that, that deep into testing it as far as how long the batteries last. This one lasts about 20 minutes if you run it nonstop. So I would say this one would probably be pretty close to that. I don't know. It's 42 volts and we're gonna use it right now to cut some of the cedar down to length and see how fast it cuts. It's got a pretty good speed to it. I was checking that earlier. It's pretty fast. I don't think Keyword is think, I may be wrong, that the steel runs that fast. It doesn't seem like it does, but I could be wrong about that. It seems like this one runs faster. So anyways, let's cut these slabs to length. And over the next few weeks, I'll give you guys an update on what I think about this saw. Not too bad. Let's try the steel. Now, I'm not sure this will affect this very scientific test we're doing here today, but the bar on the steel is shorter. Well, that's not accurate because the slab moved. Let me put something back here to hold it down. Try this again. Well, it still moved just a little and uh, just going by the visual right there, I can't tell a big difference at all in the speed on how fast that cut. So I don't know. So in closing guys, I want to thank the company for sending this out to me. I wish I could pronounce your name, but I can't. And over the next few weeks, I'll let you guys know what I think about it. All right guys, before we get back on the sawmill and finish up that cedar, Bruno just got home from school and guess what he wants to do? You guessed it, tracker ride. Can't tell him no. You guys hang in there, I'll be right back.
So this one right here though, friends, does have some issues. It's decent size. What's the diameter here? If I can do this, that drop on the camera. We're at 15 inches that way and up and down. We're about 14 inches, but it's got some issues. Got some bark occlusion right there. Kind of looks like a heart or kind of like Mickey Mouse kind of. Got the ears right here. I don't know. Looks like something. As we look down the log, there are a lot of issues going on. Got a little cavity right here. Got some spike knots coming out. A little bit of taper down there at the bottom. Some more large knots. Not an ideal saw log for cedar. This is probably the second or third cut out of a tree, if I had to guess. But we'll get something out of it. There will be a lot of waste on these slab cuts. That's just, that's just part of it. You gotta get down to your cant, we need a six inch cant, and we gotta get rid of all this right here to get to that cant. All that and all this, just part of it. logs around with a grapple versus pallet forts. I like the pallet forts. I'm, I'm a bit fun. Uh, bit fun. I'm a bit fun. I'm a big old fun. My goodness. The world's wrong with me. Get the log and bring it over. I just brought over three anyway so it wasn't a big deal. And I, like, I think it worked pretty good. Oh. Try again.